shortly before Ash Wednesday, which began the season of Lent, which ends with this glorious celebration today. I visited a 31-year-old man whom I got to know when I was parochial vicar in Sonoma, visited him in the hospital. He was having one of his treatments as he has been diagnosed with terminal cancer. And our conversation quickly turned to Lent as Ash Wednesday was about to begin. And, it is, and as is usual before Lent, most of us think about what it is that we are going to give up for Lent for our 40-day Lenten observance. And during our conversation, I asked him, I said, what are you going to give up during this Lent? As we often ask each other, what are we going to give up for Lent? And he says, you know, Father Adam, I have been reflecting on this Lent, it might be my last one here on earth. And this Lent, I am determined to give up fear. This Lent, I am determined to give up fear. One of the things we are most afraid of as people is darkness. We fear darkness. And there is a reason why the highest liturgy of the church's year takes place in the dark, in the darkness of night. Because it's what we fear most as people. We fear darkness. The theme of the celebration this evening is darkness and light. We are told to be afraid of darkness. And today, the Lord comes into our lives to tell us in so many ways, be not afraid. Give up fear forever. Not just for Lent, but forever. So many times I tell people, you know, when you read the Bible over and over again, you will notice one theme there. Be not afraid. And if somebody asks me how many times is that present in the Bible, the phrase, be not afraid, I say 365 times. 365 times. And if you don't believe me, you can Google it. <laughs> Think God has a message for us? We do this naturally as people, that is, being afraid of darkness. Today we are gathered at 8 p.m. in the midst of darkness. As Christians, we are told this night not to fear darkness, but to embrace it. Embrace your darkness. Darkness is there in our lives, and it will always be there. Jesus comes represented by this candle into our lives and says, Fear not, I am with you. Fear not darkness, I am there along your side. Darkness is there in our lives and it will always be there. Think about it. When a child is afraid of darkness in the night, what does the child do? It runs to its parents, right? It runs to their room. The child runs to their parents' bedroom. 
And just the fact that the child is in the presence of his or her parents is enough to dispel the child's fear. And the fear disappears because of the presence of the child's parents. This night proclaims to us that we are always in the presence of our Father in heaven, always, who loves us so much that he gave his only begotten Son, the Bible says. John 3.16, right? This Father in heaven who loves us so much that he gave his only begotten Son for us so that we may be his children again and forever, each and every one of us. And as Pope Francis declares, you might be sitting here today and you might say, I'm not Catholic, I'm not Christian, I don't come to church that often, I'm unchurched, I've given up on religion a long time ago. And what does Pope Francis today say? God is the father of all, all people, even atheists, all people. We are all children of God, each and every one of us. Christian or not, believer or unbeliever, we're all children of God. That is our identity in Christ Jesus our Lord. And that is where our rejoicing comes in this night. That is what comes to dispel our darkness, the darkness of our lives. In Jesus, we have once again, all of us, become God's sons and daughters. He is our loving Father walks with us on this journey of darkness. And you all know that from your life's experience. There's darkness all around us, not just here tonight, but darkness in our lives. And God walks with us on this journey to brighten us up to become the light in the midst of this darkness. And so, whatever the darkness may be in your life, whether it be depression, anxiety, family problems, financial difficulties, feelings of not belonging, as Mother Teresa says, the greatest poverty is not material poverty, and we know that. Because we live in opulence and riches in this country. The greatest poverty is the poverty of not being wanted, not being loved, not having somewhere to belong. That's the greatest poverty. And maybe you find yourself there. Maybe you have feelings of not being cared for or cared about. And God comes to us this night. He comes to us in the midst of our darkness, in the midst of feelings. Maybe you have feelings that you are less than. We all experience them once in a while, sometimes more often than not. Feelings that we are ugly. That's why there's so much plastic surgery. Big business today. Maybe you are unemployed or underemployed. Maybe you have not. Maybe you have been betrayed in your life or someone has hurt you and you have such a hard time forgiving them for what they did. Maybe you've hurt yourself. Maybe you have an addiction that you're battling with. Whatever it may be in your life today, this night proclaims that in the midst of the darkness of our life, God is by our side. And that's all that matters. God is by our side. And as the Bible says, 
If God is with us, who can be against us? God is with us. And so if God is with us, who can be against us? Who or what? Who can separate us from the love of God which we have gotten to know through Christ Jesus our Lord? Who or what? The sword, persecution, the powers of this world? No. This night proclaims to us that nothing, not even death itself, has the power to separate us from the love of God which we have gotten to know through Christ Jesus our Lord. So fear not. God is with you in the midst of your trials and tribulations, in the midst of your obstacles and problems. God is there to accompany you by your side, not to fix you, to accompany you. We're all broken, broken people. And we'll continue to be broken. And so what? God's not here to fix you. God's here to tell you he's with you. That's the miracle of our faith. That's what will make you give up fear forever. I remember on another visit to, this time to a nursing home, you know, a memory care unit in the nursing home, and I never know whether the people there know who I am. I never, so I always, when, when I'm there, I always go up to them and I ask them if they know who I am. And so I went up to this one lady who I always ask, and I said to her, I said, do you know who I am? I said to her, do you know who I am? She says, no, but if you ask at the front desk, they can tell you. <laughs> <laughs> you know why? Because she always goes to the front desk and they tell her. <laughs> this night, do you know who you are? Do you know who you are? Do you know where your identity comes from? We're children of God, all of us. We have just celebrated some of the darkest moments in the life of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. His betrayal, his brutal death, right? Betrayal, brutal death. And so I ask you, was this overall a positive experience for Jesus? You've all seen The Passion of the Christ, if you haven't read that in the Bible. then You know what he went through, how he was betrayed by Judas, right? One of the apostles, his really good friend. They loved each other. Then they hung Jesus on the cross. You know how people die on the cross? Not because they're hanging on the cross. They die there because they can't breathe. And as they gasp for air, their lungs fill with blood. And eventually you suffocate in your own blood. That's what they prepared for him. Was this a positive experience for Jesus or not? Of course it was. It was a positive experience for him because he rose from the dead and is now seated at the right hand of the Father. That's what we celebrate here today. He was victorious in the midst of his darkness because he knew that he was not alone. He knew he was not alone. And so he went through the dark periods of his life. And they were dark, weren't they? Was Jesus afraid? I ask you here tonight. Was Jesus afraid? Of course he was. What did he pray in the garden? Father, let this cup pass from me. He was afraid. 
But then he said, not my will, but your will be done. So just like you and I feared the darkness, Jesus feared. It's natural. He was a human being like you and I. He was God, but he was fully human. Fully God, fully human. You and I are called to remind ourselves at each interval of our dark experience in our life that each dark experience that we go through, no matter what that dark experience may be, that God is with us, guiding us with his light. And he guides us to glory and victory. In essence, each Good Friday, each betrayal, each dark experience leads to Easter. Alleluia! Forget not. Forget not. Keep your eye on the light in the midst of the darkness. Did you keep your eye on those candles and the light? Did you, as we walked, did you keep your light, your eye on the light of the Paschal candle? That is why as we processed into the church, we followed the Easter candle in the midst of darkness. Our light came from it. Our light comes from Jesus. From Jesus being with us. Listen. You know, listen to how people use the word dark or darkness in, the, in our midst, in our world, and in our culture, right? When people talk about dark or darkness, think about it right now. Think of the words dark or darkness. It doesn't take long for you now to realize that references to dark or darkness are 99.9% .9 always negative. I never go 100%, okay? 99.9% .9 negative. I don't know how that happened in our everyday speech. Maybe it's a linguistic fossil that's left over from our days in the caves when we were in the caves as people, you know. Or maybe it's a predictable association for people who've become addicted to light. We are addicted to light in our culture. Addicted. People hate being in darkness all the time. We want light. Well, Christians are called to embrace darkness. Woo! I got something revolutionary for you all here tonight. <laughs> you know, you thought you were... Christians are called to embrace darkness. Darkness is not bad. Was Good Friday bad? Do we call it Bad Friday? That's why we call it Good Friday, because it's not bad. It's good. Darkness is not bad. God comes to us in darkness. It's when you're going through your darkness that God comes into your life. And so we need to stop this addiction to light and realize that as people living in a dark world, and you all know that, just, just think about it, how corrupted our world is by sin and discord, by war, war, by greed, by poverty, by people judging each other, by gossip, by us making stuff up about each other. We will always be surrounded by darkness. Always. And God says in the Bible, I will give you hidden treasures in the darkness. That's Isaiah 45. I will give you hidden treasures in the darkness. Embrace the darkness of your life. Embrace your Good Friday. Embrace whatever it might be. You know, we heard from the book of Genesis today, right? Very first couple readings. Darkness existed before God even got to work. 
as a primal substance, you know, darkness. Everything was made by God from darkness. You, that's the first book in the Bible. In Exodus, which we read from again, right, our third reading, God promises to come to Moses on Mount Sinai in a dense of, the, of a dark cloud. In a dark cloud. Here, darkness is divine and where God dwells. Abraham meets God in darkness, doesn't he? Jacob wrestles an angel in the middle of the night in darkness, right? And angels announce Christ's birth to the shepherds when? At night. Ah, one more. What about Joseph? When, does, when is he spoken to? We, we're in St. Joseph Church. When was Joseph spoken to? In a dream at night. Darkness. There's so much that happens in the dark that it is essential to our Christian story. If I am a believer in God, if I believe in God, then darkness is also where God dwells. God may also be frightening and uncontrollable and largely unknown to me. Maybe that's where you're at right now. Where God is frightening and uncontrollable and you don't know this God thing too much, you know? Right? And, it, and he's unknown to you. Yet you're here. That's wonderful. I'm so happy you're here. Everybody here is happy that you're here. We're all happy you're here. How wonderful that you're here. That You know, there's no coincidences in life. It's all a God incident. You're here because you're meant to be here. There's a purpose why you're here this evening. This is not a coincidence. God has you listening to me for a reason this evening. God has you here for a reason. He wants you to hear these words. He knows what you're going through. I don't. He does. And he understands you. And he wants to come to you and say, you know, things might be frightening and uncontrollable and you may not know me and yet you're here. Trust me anyway. I'm with you. Alone, you can't make it through this. Together, we can. The message this night, my dear brothers and sisters, thus, is that there's plenty of hope in the darkness. See how wonderful it is? And you thought this was all going to be about light. And that's why, you know, that's why people are so tired sometimes at church because uh, it's like, it's all about Light, light, light. And we all live in darkness because of our problems and things. It's not all happy. You know that. It's not all peaches and cream. There's also lots of broccoli and Brussels sprouts. You know. And spinach. Recently, I've been making these horrible <laughs> inventions. <laughs> <laughs> with uh, coconut flour and all that, gluten-free and all these things. <laughs> Let's just say they, it's, I don't recommend it. <laughs> it's not all dessert. <laughs> and the message this night is that there is hope in darkness. Whatever you may be going through, there is a lot of healing and lip liberation in the darkness the christian message which is at the heart of what we are celebrating here tonight and at its heart the christian message is that when the bottom drops out and you are screaming your guts out at god there's more not more of my homily, okay? <laughs> 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 
There's more. When you are screaming your guts out at God, when, you, when the bottom drops out, there's more. It says that if you're willing to enter the cloud of unknowing, and if you're willing to meet God in the dark, maybe, you know, even in the darkness of a tomb, where was Jesus before he resurrected the tomb? Maybe the darkness even of a tomb. You know, you might be in for a surprise. Well, you're always in for a surprise at St. Joseph's. <laughs> the great hope in the Christian message is not that you will be rescued from the dark. I want to repeat that to you all today because this could really change your life. I'm really serious. It has changed mine. That's why I'm pounding away at this, okay? The great hope in the Christian message is that it's not that God will come and rescue you from the dark, but that if you are able to trust God all the way into the dark, you may be surprised. The resurrection awaits. The resurrection is here. Happy Easter.